Hey, welcome back to Bitsquid. In this video, we're going to be justifying a quadratic sequence and really trying to provide a visual representation of why the structure of the formula works, okay? So I'm going to introduce you to a pattern. It's basically a manufacturing company for steel cable. Um, you know, like in Switzerland, where you've got a steel, the, the cable cars, uh, for, for the load capacity of that cable car, they need a certain thickness of steel cable. Okay, so here's the pattern then. Uh, it's a steel company and they make this steel cable. Uh, you can see that the pattern is hexagonal. Okay, the cross section of uh, the cable looks something like this. So this is a size 4 cable. Uh, and we know it's a size 4 cable because look, the number of strands in a size 4 cable, the edge or the, this side and this side and this side, all the strands of this um, hexagon have four strands in them. Yeah, so, And also you can see... Um, that there's four layers. So there's layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four. There's four layers, as well as having four strands on each edge or the perimeter. Okay, look, each part, each edge, each side, each length here is four. Can you see that? Right, that's going to be very useful for us because going into this, um, we're going to explain, we've already explained then, haven't we? We've explained that the fourth layer um, has four strands on the edge, or in other words, we have four along the edge of this size four cable. So a size three cable would have a strand of three, and a uh, size two would have a size of two, and so on and so forth. So we're, we're going to sketch now the first, the second, and the third size cable, and find the number of strands. Now sketch and find above command terms. Here's my, oh, we've done that one already, haven't we? Uh, here's my sketch. I'm sketching my diagram for size one. This is my sketch for size two, and here's my sketch for size three. So sketch means to represent using a diagram or a graph. In this case, we're using a diagram. Now to find, we need to show some calculation. We need to show the working out. My working out simply here is to count the number of dots, okay, or the number of strands. Here I have one, so that's one strand. In size two, I have seven, that's a seven strand cable. And then for size three, I have a total of 19, that's a 19 strand cable. Now that we've established that, and then we've found that by, by sketching, what we can do is we can complete our table of values, okay? If at any point you think I'm speeding through this, you can pause the video and go back and play it, okay? What I really wanna get onto is I wanna get onto the justification. But before we do get to the justification, we really have to establish what the formula is, okay? Or the general term. So here's my table of values. Perhaps this is given to us in, in a test or a summative. We need to find out up to the ninth cable size, okay? So remember cable size four was given, and that was 37. We just sketched one, two, and three. So we know we've got one, seven, and 19. And in order for me to complete the rest of the table, I don't need to sketch, because they haven't asked me to sketch anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna observe the pattern using the first and the second difference. I notice that second term and the first term, there's a difference of six, and then there's a difference of 12. For me to confirm that, I can see that the difference between the first and second difference from 12 and six is six, from 18 and 12 is six. And so I'm gonna carry that pattern on. Assuming that pattern continues, I'm gonna carry that on. So 18 plus six, which is 24. So 37 plus 24 gives me 61. And then of course, I'm gonna add six onto 24. So 24 plus six is 30. 61 plus 30, which is gonna give us 91. And we're gonna to continue to complete the table like that. 169 plus uh, 48 gives us 217. So let's complete the table. We've completed the table. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the table to calculate um, the number of strands in the 15 cable. Now, again, we don't need to sketch the 15th cable size. We need to use the table to calculate. So that means we're gonna to continue to observe the pattern in the table. We're gonna include the ninth term, which is what we had um, from our table of values from here. The ninth term was 217. So we've got 217 for the right value. And now I'm going to continue to observe the pattern by adding 6 each time. So look at this. 56 plus 6 uh, means 60. I'm going to add 60 to 271. Gives me 331. And I'm going to carry on that pattern. So the size 15 cable has 631 strands. That's a lot of strands, yeah? What we've done there is we've just continued the table. We've observed the pattern to calculate the size 15 strand. 
Now we are at a point where we have to hence suggest a general rule for the number of strands of an n size cable. So we're trying to find a general rule, okay? So let Sn be the number of strands of a size n cable. Assuming that the second difference was constant, that means Sn is a quadratic sequence. Every quadratic sequence follows the same formula. Uh, an squared plus bn plus c. This is a quadratic, this is a general, universal general formula for any quadratic sequence, yeah? When n equals 1, we're just going to substitute here n equals 1. So a times 1 squared plus b times 1 here, look, plus c. So 1 squared is 1, 1 times a is a, 1 times b is b, and then you have your c, of course. Let's substitute the value of uh, n equals 2. You'll see why I'm doing this. I'm, I'm trying to find out what the sequence, what the formula for the sequence is. Some of you use the shortcut. There's a key that you use. A plus B plus C, 3A plus B, and then 2A. I'm showing you how we get to that, yeah? And, of course, I'm going to substitute the third value of N. So, 3 squared is 9. 9 times A is 9A. 3B is 3B, and C is C. Right. What I'm going to do with these three uh, equations is find out their difference. Now, recall that the first term of the sequence was 1, the second term of the sequence was 7, and the third term of the sequence was 19. Where does this 1, 7, and 19 come from? Let me just show you. Remember this table? Our first term was 1, our second term was 7, our third term was 19, our fourth term was 37, and so on and so on and so on. What we're going to do is find the first difference, okay? We're going to find the first difference between these terms. 4a minus a is 3a. 2b minus b is b, c minus c is 0, and then 7 minus 1 is 6. Let's find the next difference. 9a minus 4a gives me 5a. 3b minus 2b is 1b, and then c minus c is 0. 19 minus 7 is 12. Let's check out the second difference. 5a minus 3a gives me 2a. Uh, b minus b gives me nothing, and then 12, well, well, b minus b is 0, and then 12 minus 6 is 6. Now check this out. Some of you are familiar with this idea now. Some of you are familiar with 2a, 3a plus b, a plus b plus c as being the key to unlock this formula. All we need to do is find out the values of a, b, and c. a must be equal to 3 because 2 times something equals 6, which in this case is 3. Now that we know that a is 3, we can substitute it here. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus something makes 6, which is minus 3. And then, of course, C, if I substitute my values of A and B into this equation, 3 minus 3 is 0, and then plus 1 equals to 1. So C is equal to 1. Possibly ignore this if you wanted to, if you don't get it, but you do need to know then that uh, this part here is really what you're doing when you're using the key. You're using the key to find out a plus b plus c equals 1, uh, 3a plus b equals 6, and 2a is equal to 6. This is, this is your your um, combination. Where would you get 166 from? Some of you might be asking that. 166 is obviously from the table here. Okay, there's your 1, there's your 6, and there's your 6. Your first term, uh, the first term of the first difference, and the first term of the second difference. Okay. And so if I substitute these values of a, b, and c into the general formula, in fact, I think I should just write the general formula here, a n squared plus b n plus c. If I substitute those values in, I get my a is as 3, so 3 n squared. My b is minus 3, so minus 3 n, and then the c is plus 1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to verify that the rule works. Our rule, our formula is 3n squared minus 3n plus 1. Now, in order to verify, what I'm going to do is, since we were given n equals 4, which has 37 strands, we can substitute um, n equals 4 into our general rule, okay, to check that it satisfies uh, the pattern or the relationship or, or this sequence. So, okay, so when n equals 4, we're going to substitute um, 4 into the equation. So 4 squared... 3 times 4 plus 1, that gives us 48 minus 12 plus 1, and that gives us 37. So we can verify that our formula gives us 37, and we know that we had 37 strands in the size 4 cable. Now, in addition to verifying using n equals 4, we can sketch and count the number of strands of a cable that was not given to us. So in this case, the smallest possible cable size would be size 5, okay? That, that wasn't given to us. So let's sketch a size 5 cable. 
Okay, it's going to take a, here we go, look, there's a size 5 cable. And then what we can do is we can count the number of dots that we have in the size 5 cable, yeah? So let's count how many dots we have. Here we go, we've got, uh, carry on, 37, 38, 39, 40, and carries on, 55. We have 61 um, strands in a size 5 cable, yeah? There's 61 strands in total. Let's substitute n equals um, 5 to verify that the formula works. 5 squared, 25 times 3, uh, minus 3 times 5 plus 1. That gives me 75 minus 15 plus 1, and that gives me 61 strands, okay? So the formula, we can verify that the formula works because we have 61 strands when we substitute into the formula, and we've actually sketched it out to give us 61 strands. So that, that's verification done. Now, here's the part that you've been waiting for. You've been waiting for the justification, okay? I'm just going to justify uh, why the general rule works. So look at this, look at this. This is a size 4 cable, correct? Now, I know it's a size 4 cable because it's got four strands on the edge. You can count all the way around. When n equals 4, you have four strands. So that basically means that this edge is n. If it was a size 3 cable, then, of course, the n would be three strands. If it's a side two, two cable, then n would represent two. So I'm going to visually represent the structure of the system of my formula, okay? Show you how it works. So look at this. I've drawn like a square, you can call it a diamond, whatever. It's n by n, because look, the length and the width here are n. And n by n is n squared. And actually, if I count the number of strands inside there, uh, here we go, look, there's 16 strands, it's a 4 by 4 there's 16 strands in that shape there, yeah? In that square, there's 16 strands. Now look at this, I'm going to draw another identical square, it's just got a different orientation, but it's, it's the same square. It's also n by n, which is n squared. And there are 16 strands here, by the way, yeah? And again, I've got n by n, which is n squared, which is another 16 strands. In total then, I've got three n squareds. But what you might notice is there's an overlap. There's an overlap of these strands when I drew uh, my three different n squares. There's an overlap of these strands. And if you notice that these strands are the value of n because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4, because it's size 4 cable, that's the value of n. Yeah. So actually, I have to minus off, I have to subtract 3n. But if I'm subtracting all those three ends, which is fine now, I have all the number of I have all the number of strands that I need, except the one that I've minus from here in the middle. So I need to add back that one. So here you can see now that I've justified using this visual representation of uh, my formula three n squared minus three n plus one. And actually, to be fair, what I can do as well, I can say, look, there's sixteen strands in the green one plus 16 strands in the orange one, plus 16 strands in um, in the blue one, and then I've got minus, because I minus the four strands three times, I minus these four, these four, and these four, so I minus four uh, times three, and then I plus one. And if you do the math here, you get 16 plus 16 plus 16, which is 48, uh, and minus 12 plus one, that makes 37. So actually, if you recall that in the size four strand, there were 37 actual strands, weren't there? Yeah. So that, that just justifies the formula works. Here's another way, because there might be, you know, there's several ways for you to justify that a formula works. Here's, here's a better way that doesn't show any overlap. So again, let's justify that the formula works with a size four cable. Here, what I've done is I've done a four by four. So it's N by N. You can see this, you know, a lot more clearer here. Uh, so that's that. That gives me my n squared because I've got n times n. That's my n squared. And here, look look at this one here. I've got n because that's a 4. But however, this is not a 4, is it? Look, there's one, two, there's three strands here. So in a size 4 cable, I've got three st strands. That's n minus 1. My n should be 4. It's not. It's 3 in this case. So that's n minus 1. And then finally, um, the green dots, the green strands here, I've got 3 here by 3, okay, 3 by 3, which is n minus 1 times n minus 1. What I should get when I expand all of this, okay, when I expand all of this out, you'll see that I get n squared, and then let me just expand, n times n is n squared, and n times minus 1 is minus n, 
and then here if I expand this one out, n times n is n squared, um, n times minus 1 and minus 1 times n is minus 2n and then minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. And now if I collect my like terms, I've got n squared plus n squared plus n squared, that's 3n squared. And you notice that I have minus n minus 2n, which is minus 3n, and then plus 1 at the end. So again, a different way to justify that this pattern works. Okay, so let me get to the main part here, the reason why we have hence. Okay, so what we just done was the otherwise, otherwise justify using some form of uh, visual representation, yeah? of the structure of that formula. Uh, there, is a, there is a clause here that says, recall the triangle numbers. It can be calculated using this formula, n bracket n plus one divided by two. I'm just gonna quickly recall, show you what the triangular numbers are. So the first five triangular numbers um, are respectively one, three, six, 10, and 15. So we're gonna use this sequence and the formula to justify our pattern. So here we go. I'm gonna draw out size one, two, three, and four. And I'm just going to try to explore how the triangles work here, yeah? So just looking at my fourth pattern, I've got an n minus 1, the third triangle here, yeah? What do I mean by the third triangle? I mean t equals 3, so it's um, six, six dots in that triangle. So that, that would be t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals 3. Now I just want to see how many of these I can fit into this shape. And look, I can fit in one, two, three, four, five. There's six of those triangles, okay? Uh, N minus one triangles here. And I've got one constant in the middle, one purple dot or blue dot here in the middle. Let me look at size three. In the size three cable, again, I have one constant in the middle and then I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six triangles. Notice that this is a size three cable and the triangles are size two triangle, yeah? T2 triangles, so it's N minus one. I, look, I'll show you that. That's n because it's 3. And then if I've got a 2, that's going to be n minus 1. A 2 base triangle, n minus 1. The same thing stands for size 2. I've got one constant in the middle, and then I've got six triangles. And then uh, for size 1, I've just got one constant. So what I notice here is that each time I do this, I get six triangles in my cable. Okay? Doesn't matter what the cable size is, I always get uh, six triangles using this justification. Now you could do different size triangles or you can do a different, <coughs> or you can do a different way to justify this. So look at this, what I'm saying is I've got six triangles each time. So that's, I'm observing that pattern. Uh, and what I notice is then therefore, if I use this formula, oops, what would I, so if I use this formula for the triangle numbers, in my first observation for a cable size of four, I notice then that for UN, when, when this cable size is four, I end up taking one off the cable size for the triangles. So it's t n minus one times six plus one. Or in other words, when I'm looking for the fourth size, n equals four, I have to do t three times six plus one. Times six because there's six triangles, and then plus one because there's one constant in the middle. And if you look, you can observe the same pattern in the size three cable, look. For U3, so when n equals 3, for size 3 cable, I'm using T2 times 6 plus 1. And you see, I even observe the same thing for the other size triangles. So this is a pattern that I observe no matter what the size of the cable is. So the general formula then would be, instead of writing T2, T3, T1, and so on and so on, I can substitute the value of Tn into this equation. Remember that it was n minus 1. It's always n minus 1 because it's a smaller size than the actual size of the cable. So instead of writing the uh, formula for the triangle numbers, I'm going to do n minus 1 and then n minus 1 here. So look, instead of writing n, I've substituted n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 times 6 triangles plus my 1 constant. That is my formula for the sequence of patterns that I've noticed here for my sequence here. Yeah? So what we need to do now is simplify this uh, to see if we get the formula that we started off with. So look at this, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then I can rewrite this by cancelling out the minus 1 and the plus 1, which will just give me n minus 1 and then times n, because this cancels out. I've still got my plus 1 at the end. Now I need to expand this, so n times n will give me n squared, minus 1 times n is minus n, and then finally if I expand the 3, I end up getting 3n squared minus 3n, plus 1. 
So then finally, my general formula is un equals 3n squared minus 3n plus 1. Now that is a super long justification, but you have options. There are many ways in which you can justify using the triangular numbers like, like so, uh, or you can use the squares, okay, n by n. Um, you can use the overlapping squares. It's entirely up to you. There's, I mean, however which way you can represent the shape physically, the parts of the structure of your formula, which is 3n squared minus 3n plus 1, however you can show that physically, uh, and then represent using the variable n to prove that your formula works, okay? That's what justification is, providing valid evidence as to the structure of the formula and how it works. As always, thanks for watching. I hope that was useful to you, especially for your upcoming summative. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.